when Apple announced this, Mark, it, it, it wasn't too much fanfare, and then we started to see it show up in those Facebook or Meta earnings. What do you think about today's Google move? Is it going to have a similar effect? I don't know if it has uh, as material impact as the Apple moves for two or three reasons, but it just is increasing the pressure on Facebook and those millions of marketers who use it to come up with an ad attribution model that goes beyond privacy. Uh, they need a post-privacy ad attribution model. The differences here, though, are one, Google is telling people you got two years to figure out a solution. And secondly, they're saying we have two years to figure out a solution. Google is calling on the advertising community to come up with ways that allow targeting but don't violate people's privacy. Apple, on the other hand, you know, gave people a year and didn't invite any input. So I, I think the risk isn't as great with this uh, 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 this turn, but the overall pressure is there. Facebook has got to find a post-privacy ad attribution model. My guess is that they will be able to do it. There's too much at stake for them not to do it, and they have the resources to do it, but that's the challenge. But why is Google doing this? Are they trying to get ahead of regulators? Uh, I'm not sure about the why, uh, Sarah. That sounds like a, a reasonable um, interpretation, and it could also just be responding to popular demand. I, uh, we saw consumers had a chance to vote. They had a chance to vote with their clicks as to whether they wanted to be tracked and or not wanted to be tracked. And most of them, uh, yeah, generally, it was 70 to 80 percent of people who said, "Don't track me." So uh, consumers have voted and uh, have clicked, and I think Google sees that and says, "We better do the same thing." Mark, wanted to ask uh, about Facebook, clearly some implications uh, on uh, today's news, but, but more broadly, if we step back from, from the last six months that they've gone, gone through, do you feel now that the name change was an act of desperation because they knew their core business was evaporating, or was it in fact actually quite forward thinking and, and this past quarter will be a small blip? Well, one, uh, Wilfred, I want to wish you the best of luck, and it's been great working with you. Best of luck going forwards. I know this today's your last day. Uh, second Thank is, um, uh, uh, second is, I, you know, look, I don't think their core business is evaporating at all. I'm going to throw out a number to you. Facebook's ad revenue in the December quarter, when they had a, an, uh, a privacy challenge quarter versus one last year that wasn't, it still grew 20% year over year. Like, that's pretty good growth on an enormous amount of scale. I think Facebook can still maintain premium growth rates. They've got three challenges. They've got to address these ESG regulatory risks. That's one of the challenges from an investor's perspective. They've got to address this post-privacy. Can they come up with a post-privacy ad attribution model? I think they can. They've got to prove it, though. And third, can they fend off TikTok? I think they can, too. I think the assets that they have are much broader than just what TikTok offers. But there's no question the competitive risk has risen. The gauntlet's been thrown down to Facebook. It's just that this isn't, you don't, you don't need a hope strategy with Facebook. This company has been executing against challenges, the switch to mobile, the, the incor incorporation of, um, of things like stories, the rise of assets like Snapchat. They've been doing this for 15 years. My bet is that they're going to figure this out over the next year or two. I think patient investors can use this as a buying opportunity, even though we may not have any outperformance for the next three to six months.